Hi guys, it's Alyssa. I am here with another reading for you today. I hope you've all been doing well. So I have three decks of cards here. Today we're going to be asking, should you confess your feelings to your person of interest? So obviously this is going to be geared towards romantic connections. Should you tell your person how you feel? Are the feelings mutual? How do they feel about you? That is what we're gonna be looking into today. So three decks, one, two, and three. For deck number one, which is the Light Seer's Tarot, I have some Amethyst here. Deck number two is the Night Sun Tarot, and I have some Selenite with that. And deck number three is the Golden Tarot with Bloodstone. So, timestamps will be in the comment section as usual. Um, if the timestamps are not pinned to the top, just scroll down. They'll be there somewhere. Sometimes I forget to pin them, but they will always be there. Um, so, take a moment, meditate on your person, think about it, pause the video if you need to. Okay, so we are just going to go ahead and get started with group number one. Oops. Okay. Group one, let's find out if you should tell your person how you really feel about them. Should you confess your feelings? So right away we have the Six of Swords popping out. We have the High Priestess. The Lovers. Things are looking pretty promising so far. Oh. Ace of Pentacles and Queen of Pentacles. The Empress. And let me get one more for right now. Whoa. Okay, um, all right. We have the King of Pentacles here. We have the Three of Cups and we have Judgment. So, all right, let's work with this. And we have the Magician on the bottom of the card, uh, on the bottom of the deck, rather, sorry. So, um, group number one. This is looking like a pretty promising spread here. So um, I want to talk really quickly about this. This is the Magician. This is the card on the bottom of the deck. Um, the card on the bottom usually gives me kind of an overall energy or theme to the reading. And um, the Magician is all about potential. It's all about manifestation, creativity, potential. Um, being the first card of the Major Arcana, it also kind of has this energy of like new beginnings as well, um, new fresh energy coming into a situation. So with that said, um, we have a lot of really positive cards here. So the Six of Swords, first of all, this card is a lot of times about conflict resolution. It can represent reconciliation. Really, this is just about people coming together solving problems, moving forward into calmer waters. We also have the High Priestess. This is associated with um, like hidden knowledge, revelations. And uh, this is a very spiritual kind of energy. Typically the High Priestess, you know, she, um, she is a keeper of wisdom. 
And so this card has an association with like clarity, insight, gaining new understanding. Um, also, the lover's card, this is union, partnerships, unconditional love. This card can also represent choice. And um, the queen of pentacles and the king of pentacles are showing up here. So these two cards are counterparts, obviously. And um, in general, you know, these two cards relate to prosperity, abundance, particularly in the realm of like physical, tangible things like work, money, etc. But, you know, in, in the relationship context, these two cards talk to me more about just stability, relationship stability, relationship security, feeling secure and safe within your connection to someone else. And... Um, this is also, because they're counterparts, um, I, I see this as a union, okay? An abundant, prosperous union. Ace of Pentacles, similar. More of that earthy Pentacles energy. The Ace in particular is about new beginnings. And the imagery here, this, this card kind of looks like a seed that's ready to be planted, that's ready to take root. So I'm, I'm seeing that your connection to whoever it is you're thinking about has a lot of potential. I'm, I'm, I'm getting that very, very strongly. A lot of potential, a lot of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? This, this feels like something that could become very strong, very substantial, because we've got, you know, all of this, like, pentacles energy here, and I feel like the two of you already have a pretty um, significant connection to each other. The Three of Cups, this card relates to, like, strong bonds between people, emotional bonds, um, unity, wholeness, togetherness, etc., and Judgment, this is, uh, I, I consider this to be one of the soulmate cards. I think some people do. Um, and the Lover's card also relates to soul connections. But um, Judgment, this is Awakenings. This is Rebirth, Restoration. Uh, this card also a, a lot of times indicates a some kind of transformation happening, some kind of significant change on the horizon. So um, I honestly feel like for a lot of you, uh, you do have a soul connection to the person that you're asking about, and I feel like you probably already know that, so I'm not going to dwell on that too much, but um, the Empress card, I didn't mention this yet, but the Empress card is actually kind of similar to the Three of Cups, and it's also similar, I feel, to the Magician in some ways, because the Empress also relates to creativity, manifestation, opportunity. Um, the Empress is a very loving, gentle, compassionate kind of energy. You know, she is a maternal figure. Um, but this is like, this is like a feeling of wholeness, a feeling of completion. It's, it's as if the two of you fit together just right. I don't want to say that you complete each other necessarily because, you know, we're all whole, complete people on our own, but it's like the two of you come together and you create something bigger than yourselves, if that makes sense. Um, I get the sense that this person that we're talking about does have very fond, affectionate feelings towards you. This is a just overall a very loving kind of energy that I'm getting from this person. And I want to pull a couple more cards um, and see specifically what kind of feelings they have towards you. Um, I get the sense that, okay, we have the Emperor showing up here, which is interesting because the Empress is already out. So we've got another set of counterparts here. Um, the Emperor is kind of a reserved, like, stoic figure to me. Um, he relates to control, discipline. Uh, also, though, stability and security, kind of similar to that Pentacles energy. We have the Nine of Swords coming up here. This is interesting because the Nine of Swords relates to anxiety and stress and worry. Um, let me get one more for right now. Okay, Three of Wands. So, the... <laughs> 
I feel like I've said it a, a million times already, but the word potential just keeps coming to mind for me. It's like, it's like this connection has what it takes. It's like the two of you have what it takes to take this relationship far. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, the three of wands, this is opportunity. This is broadening your horizons, looking out into the unknown. It's potential for action, potential for change. I feel, I feel for a lot of you, um, this, this doesn't feel like something that's very new. It feels as if you have known this person for some time. I feel like some of you maybe even have had a relationship with this person in the past, or there's been, you've been involved in some way in the past. You know, maybe you were just talking, maybe you never really had a chance to get into a relationship, but I just get the sense that you guys have known this person, most of you have known this person for, for some time, you know, a few months at least, and some things I feel have already gone down in this connection. Like, the Nine of Swords implies to me that there there maybe has been some sort of conflict, and, and the Six of Swords as well, that there maybe has been some sort of conflict or misunderstanding in this relationship already, and I feel like a lot of you now are in, in a position where you're wondering, you know, is there still hope for this relationship? Is there still hope for this connection? Like, do they still care about me? Do they still have love for me after what happened? Do you know what I'm saying? Um, I would say, I would say yes. I mean, I feel like this person still sees so much potential within this connection. And they may be coming across kind of stoic, kind of reserved, you know, keeping their um, feelings concealed. But I think deep down, this person does feel a lot of love towards you. Um, but I get the impression that they are um, a little bit worried because, hang on, let me get a couple more cards here. We have the world, the wheel, sorry. The wheel, the ace of swords, and two of swords. Okay, so I was just saying how I feel some of you are wondering, you know, is there still hope for this connection? Does this person still care about me? Do they still want to be with me in some capacity? Um, I feel like your person is kind of in that same boat, like they're asking themselves the same questions. You know what I'm saying? The Ace of Swords and the Two of Swords, these two cards are giving me like analysis paralysis vibes and and the nine of swords too um the two of swords in particular this is like being locked in a stalemate this is like not knowing how to move forward in a situation like what what do i do here what what decision do i make um it it comes up a lot when someone is just feeling very stuck um unsure how to proceed and the wheel you know, this is about cycles, endings, and new beginnings. This also relates to fate, divine guidance, divine timing. Um, I feel that whatever the two of you went through, it, it happened for a reason. It was supposed to help you guys to, you know, grow and understand each other a little bit. It, it was like it was meant to give you guys a deeper understanding of one another so that your connection could deepen. For some of you, um, well, I think for a lot of you, you're still kind of in that process of figuring out what that lesson was supposed to be. Um, so, hang on. I'm, I'm getting that, I'm hearing that some of you need to take some time to really reflect on this connection, um, meditate on it, particularly the emotions that this relationship has triggered in you. Like, think about what led to the conflict or what led to the misunderstanding, whatever it was that occurred here. Um, think about how this person makes you feel 
you know, positive and negative, right? Um, and I think in doing that, you'll be able to identify more clearly uh, what it is this connection is supposed to teach you, okay? And I, I, I want to say I don't really feel like this is a karmic thing, or at least it's not a strictly karmic connection. Um, this seems like something deeper than that, okay? Um, a lot of times karmic relationships, like, you learn the lesson and then, you know, that's it. Like, it has run its course. Usually you go your separate ways. But... Um, I feel like a lot of soulmate relationships, there, there is some aspect of karma there, you know. Um, there is a karmic element, but that's not, um, that's not the focus, you know. Every relationship is supposed to teach us something, you know, every relationship that we have. Um, but anyway, I'm kind of uh, getting off topic here. Um, let me move this curtain because I feel like the sun is coming in too bright. Okay, so, um, yeah, like I was saying, uh, I get the sense that this person has kind of been in the same boat as you, like wondering, is there still potential for this? Do we still have a chance? Um, should I come towards, you know, they're wondering, should they come towards you and express to you how they feel? Um, they're, they're really, yeah, the moon, this is... This is about the unknown. This is about um, secrets, illusions. Uh, they're wondering, should they come forward? Should they illuminate you um, in terms of how they feel and, and what they think about this connection? Um, the star card, this is hope and optimism. This is also related to healing, restoration, and this card also relates a lot to, you know, the concepts of fate, destiny, similar to the wheel. I definitely, definitely feel like this relationship has a higher purpose. Like, this this feels like a soulmate connection. Um, and this star, this is saying to me, they still have a lot of hope for this relationship. Like you, they, they still think very highly of you. They still care about you a lot. They still have a lot of loving feelings towards you. I'm not sure that this person is actually like in love with you, but you know, that's, that's something that develops over time, right? And um, I kind of feel like this person would like to have an opportunity to get to that point, if that makes sense. But, like I mentioned, I think with the Emperor card, um, I just get the, the feeling that they have been coming off to you as reserved, kind of detached. And that's just because, you know, they're not sure. They're, they're kind of worried. You know, they, they don't know. Um, I feel like your person might be a little bit worried that you're upset with them or that you are totally over them. Like, they, um, okay, the Ace of Cups. Yeah, I feel like this person is kind of worried that you maybe are moving on or that you have moved on. Ooh. Nine of Cups. This relates to wish fulfillment, contentment, satisfaction, particularly having, you know, all of your emotional needs being filled, feeling very satisfied in that respect. Um, I think that having an opportunity to develop this relationship further, to invest in this connection, is something that your person is wishing for, hoping for. So should you confess your feelings to them? I would say yes. I would say yes. Give them that revelation because they're thinking about doing the same thing. I mean, I guess, I guess you, 
maybe some of you could, you know, wait and allow this person to make the first move. But honestly, I don't really see a reason to do that unless you're like just really nervous for some reason. Um, because, I mean, why not just take the initiative? Uh, but, you know, either way, I feel like this stuff is going to come out regardless of who makes that first move. Okay. Um, it's just, you know, if, if you chose to wait, you might be waiting for a little while because your person doesn't really have any other way of knowing if you're still interested, if you still care about them, etc. Um, but anyway, the short answer, I think, is yes, I feel like you should tell your person how you feel if you want to. Um, group one, that's really all that I'm getting for you today. And I hope this was interesting. I hope that it resonated with you. And um, if you're interested in booking a private reading, the links to my Etsy store and my website are in the description below. So you can check those out if you want to. Um, thank you for joining me. I hope I see you next time, guys. Bye. Okay, so group two. Let's find out how your person feels about you. Should you tell them how you feel? That is a few too many cards. These cards are really um, slippery. They have this real like glossy finish on them. So they're a little bit difficult to hold on to when shuffling. Okay, we have the Four of Swords coming out right away. We have the Five of Cups here, interesting. Okay, Ten of Pentacles. Two of Cups. Hmm. Seven of Pentacles. Let me just, let me see what these cards are. Okay. We have the lovers here. We have the moon and we have the empress. So I'm going to leave it there for now. The card on the bottom of the deck, you guys, is the Nine of Swords. So this card relates to anxiety, stress, worry, overthinking things. Um, with this being on the bottom of the deck, I get the impression that many of you maybe are in this kind of state right now, worrying about this connection, worrying about what's to come. You know, should you initiate something here? Should you not? Should you wait? Should you just walk away? Hmm. Okay. So, um, we do have some really positive cards here, but we also have some not so great cards. So this is kind of a, kind of a conflicting thing going on here. Um, we have the 10 of pentacles. This card relates to you know, contentment, satisfaction, abundance, prosperity. Um, the Ten of Pentacles, I relate a lot to, you know, loving relationships, a happy home life, that kind of thing. It's a, it's a very, like, domestic kind of energy to me. Um, but in the relationship context, usually it, it represents just a very solid, very stable and secure, happy relationships, okay? <clears throat> we also have the Two of Cups here, as well as the lovers. So these two cards are quite similar. They both indicate union. They both indicate a partnership, two people who are in alignment with each other, who are, you know, a, a balanced, functional relationship. And both of these cards also relate to, you know, unconditional love and satisfaction. So um, <clears throat> we do have a, a lot of energy of like, romantic interest, definitely. <clears throat> I am getting that this person is very attracted to you. Um, the Empress here, 
the the empress is is a very capable very powerful and appealing figure she's very appealing in a lot of ways and i kind of get the sense that this may be how this particular person views you and you know the empress does relate to the divine feminine energy however you don't necessarily have to be a woman for this to be applicable it's it's energy you know so so don't get caught up on gender um but the empress it's it's power it's attraction and this card also relates to wish fulfillment manifestation manifesting desires so i kind of feel like this person sees you as like their ideal partner or like they just it seems like they just think very highly of you okay they find you to be very attractive. They find you very interesting, like you really pique their curiosity. But I feel like at the same time, they may also be a little bit intimidated by you. Okay. So um, this is interesting because actually a lot of this feels like your person's energy rather than your energy. I, I, was, I was mentioning with the Nine of Swords, like it feels like a lot of you just have a lot of worry about this relationship, but I feel like for many of you, your person also is quite worried about it as well. Um, the Five of Cups, this card relates to sadness, um, loss. It can represent being very fixated on the negatives, like a very pessimistic um, mindset. And in this particular case, I I kind of feel like this is sort of where your person is at. It's it's like they are concerned. Let's see, how do I want to say this? Um, I feel that you and, and the person you're asking about, I do feel that there has been some, uh, maybe some issues in this connection. Um, and actually, I feel like some of you may not even be in contact with this person. Like, you might be in separation right now. And even if that's the case, this person is definitely still thinking of you. Like, they're definitely still... This connection is definitely still on their mind. But it's like they're very fixated on... <sighs> the negatives not not so much in the sense that let's see okay i'm trying to figure out how i want to explain this this vibe that i'm getting it's not so much that they're fixated on like the negative aspects of your connection or like bad things that happened between you it's like they're fixated on their mistakes and their negative feelings like regret and guilt and stuff like that and you know obviously this is just general so like it's going to be different for all of you but it just feels for the for the majority you know something happened that led to a separation or led to you guys having little communication with each other and i feel like that's where most of you are now and it's like your person is very concerned about you potentially moving on you no longer being interested in them etc but they're also too i feel like they're too nervous or too afraid to actually reach out to you and 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 try to initiate something like initiate a reconciliation or anything like that um, I do see potential for a reconciliation to happen if that's something that you're interested in. But, um, you know, right now your person is very much keeping their feelings to themselves. The moon here is about things that are hidden, secrets, um, illusions, the subconscious. I feel like... I feel like your person is, how do I want to say this? Your person has a lot of insecurities, I feel. And something about your connection to each other has sort of magnified those insecurities for them, if that makes sense. And so I think that's contributing to why they have this, why they're in this very pessimistic kind of state right now. Um, 
it's like they're, it, it just feels like they're really, really stuck in their head, like caught up in their thoughts about this whole situation. So, um, let me, let me grab a couple more cards here, see if there's anything else that wants to come out. We have death and the four of wands showing up here. So death is about transformation, endings, but also new beginnings. And the four of wands, this is unity and togetherness. And um, I, the, the four of wands to me is quite similar to the two of cups in the sense that, you know, it, it also talks to me of um, balanced, functional relationships, loving relationships. This card also talks about celebration. It can represent marriage, etc. So um, I feel like there's a lot of potential here for things to change for the better, for things to improve within this connection. Um, however, I feel like it's going to take time to get there. Um, the Four of Swords, this is rest, reflection, contemplation. This is really like pressing pause on a situation. And also, the Seven of Pentacles here. This is, no, this is not the Seven of Pentacles. This is the Six of Pentacles. <laughs> um, my bad. The Six of Pentacles, this relates to balance, fairness, generosity. It's like your, your person needs to find a balance here within themselves. I, I feel like I feel like this person is kind of going through it like emotionally. Like your connection triggered a lot of um like I mentioned insecurities for them. It just triggered a lot of feelings that I think they never they they they've never really um sat on before. It's like It's like it brought up to the surface things that they had suppressed or, or, you know, pushed down in the past. Things that they, things about themselves that they prefer to ignore or have ignored um, in the past. And so it's like they need to find this balance within themselves and, and they need to kind of, um, let's see, what are these cards? We have the Fool and the Knight of Cups here. They need to find this balance within themselves, and they're they're kind of going through a, a bit of a transformation, I feel, like emotionally and spiritually to an extent. Like, your connection has had a pretty profound impact on them. And honestly, I, I really feel that the two of you met for a reason, like a higher purpose. There's a higher purpose to this. And I, I feel that this connection probably uh, triggered a lot of feelings, difficult stuff for you, um, some growth, some transformation for you. But I feel like for them, it has been, it, it, it's been like times 10, if that makes sense. It's like, You've made a lot more progress than they have so far, if, if that makes sense. Um, and, and they just, they need to figure this stuff out. They need time to process what they're experiencing, process the feelings that they're going through. And, and heal some stuff. And so, as far as whether you should tell this person how you feel about them, um, I would say yes. However, I think you should wait. I think, I think it should wait. Because, like I said, there is a lot of potential here. And with the Knight of Cups, I do feel like there is a strong possibility of, you know, a, a love offer happening in this relationship and, and a new beginning happening in this relationship, but it's going to take time. And the Four of Swords here is really emphasizing to me, like, this person needs time and they need space to do this inner work that they're being called to do right now. So, um, 
really your answer is wait. And I know that answer kind of, I mean, I don't know. It's, it's not, it's not a great, it's not a great answer, but just know that you know, I, I feel that you will cross paths again. Like this is something that will come back together, but it's only going to happen when the time is right and when both of you are prepared for it to happen. Okay. So, um, I, I, I feel like the feelings are for the most part, uh, I'm going to say mutual, like this, this person does, um, have an interest in you. They do care about you. They do have loving feelings towards you. But at this point in time, they are very, very focused on just themselves and what they're going through. Okay. So, um, group two, I think I'm going to leave it there. I hope that this resonated with you and I hope it was interesting. This is just a general reading, so don't take it like too seriously. Um, take what applies to you and leave the rest behind if something doesn't fit. Don't try to make it fit. Um, thank you for joining me today. I really appreciate it. And I hope I see you next time, guys. Bye. Okay, group three. Let's find out if you should confess your feelings to your person of interest. And do they feel the same way? How do they feel about you? So, <clears throat> right away we have the judgment card. We have the Two of Wands. We have the Hermit, the Tower, a lot of majors so far, Four of Cups, Page of Cups. Knight of Cups, okay, and the Hierophant. All right, so I think we're going to leave it there for right now. Group three, the card on the bottom of the deck for you is the Knight of Wands. The Knight of Wands is a very action-oriented card. I mean, knights in general, um, these cards relate to movement, action, messages coming through, communication. You know, knights go on missions. They go on quests. So um, this is, you know, right away I, I get this feeling of like there needs to be some kind of, there needs to be some kind of uh, honesty in this connection. Um, the Knight of Wands also is a very, you know, fiery, passionate kind of energy. Wands correspond to the fire element. Um, and it's kind of a quick moving energy as well. So with that said, uh, we also have the Knight of Cups here, which is somewhat similar. Um, cups, however, relate more to love, emotions, relationships. So a lot of times this card represents offers of love being made, expressions of love, people opening up about their feelings. Um, so like I said, I, I do feel that there is, um, you're, you're kind of being asked to have a conversation with this person, which is interesting. Um, Page of Cups, very, very similar to the Knight of Cups. Again, you know, pages are messengers. So this has a real strong connection to communication. Um, and again, that Cups energy, it's, it's like opening up about feelings, talking about emotions. Um, so I do get the impression that there needs to be a conversation between you and the person you're thinking about. The Judgment card, this is about revelations, rebirth, awakening. Um, this card also has an association with like healing and transformation as well. This card can indicate a very significant change happening. Um, typically a, a positive change, but something big nonetheless. And it's interesting because the tower is also showing up here and the tower is kind of similar in the sense that this is also about change. This card a lot of times represents like big life-changing events, like all of your expectations just falling apart, crumbling around you. Um, everything that you know or everything that you think you know just, just 
falling apart and you having to pick up the pieces and rebuild. Um, I do get the impression that right now, the two of you, it, it seems like you may not be in contact with each other because we have the Four of Cups. This is a very stagnant kind of energy. This card can represent procrastination. It can also indicate apathy. Um, and we have the Hermit, which is about withdrawal, isolation. Um, the Hermit is a very solitary kind of energy. So I, I just, I get the sense that you and your the person you're thinking of um, maybe at a distance from each other. You may not be talking right now. You may be in separation. Um, the two of wands here, this is about choice. This is about decision making. That very active nature of the wands cards, though, make me feel like, um, you know, a, a lot of times I see this as a decision that's already been made. So like intention, okay? Intention, potential for action. Um, I kind of feel like, I kind of feel like this person actually has intentions of reaching out to you. I'm going to go ahead and pull a few more cards and see what else wants to come up here. We have the Ten of Wands. We have the Three of Swords. Let me get one more for right now. Okay. Or two, that works. Queen of Coins and the Three of Wands. So the Three of Wands obviously follows the two, and so it's kind of like that intention being, um, oh, what's the word? It, it's kind of like the next step forward, you know what I'm saying? Um, so it's like the Two of Wands, you've made a decision about something. The Three of Wands is like planning. Um, it, it's still not quite taking action yet, but it's like planning for your next step, planning how to accomplish whatever it is you've decided to do. Um, this card also relates to potential, the unknown, broadening your horizons. Um, it's it's a card of opportunity as well. So um, with that said, the Ten of Wands here, this relates to like letting go of something that's really weighing on you, letting go of some kind of burden that you're carrying on your shoulders. And the Three of Swords, this is heartache, this is grief, this is betrayal, um, very heavy energy. And I, I, I feel like you and the person you're asking about have maybe been through some difficult stuff. Like, I get the impression that for most of you, there's been a lot of conflict or a lot of, like, misunderstandings. Just things have not worked out great um, for the two of you, unfortunately. And I get the sense that there are some things that maybe have been left unsaid, feelings left unresolved. And I think that's where this Ten of Wands is coming in, and I think that's also why it it seems to me like you guys need to have some kind of conversation. There's all these communication cards here. Um, okay, interesting. It just feels like you guys need to clear the air about something, or some things, perhaps, plural. Whoa. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, the Six of Swords. This card is about conflict resolution. This card is, um, it's people coming together, working through problems, moving forward into calmer waters. In the relationship context, a lot of times this does speak of a reconciliation happening. And swords in general, these cards relate to clarity, insight, you know, honesty. So I'm... Yeah, I I feel like the answer to this question, should you tell this person how you feel, I feel like this is a yes, but I'm also getting there's other things that need to be discussed too. Um, the Queen of Coins is here and also the Hierophant. Both of these cards are Earth Energy. Both of these cards talk to me about stability, security. Um, I feel like, let's see. 
I feel like there is potential for this connection to improve. I feel like there is potential for you and this person to develop something better than what you had in the past. Um, something more solid, something more stable. However, I feel like in order for that to happen, there has to be a lot of honesty and there, there has to be, things have to be worked through but it's not going to happen with the two of you not talking. It's like, this is the kind of stuff that has to be worked out together because it's stuff that both of you are involved in and or affected by. This isn't like personal stuff. This isn't like, it, it, it's not like you guys are at a point where you need to be doing work individually you know you know what i'm saying this is um this is something that can only be solved through just honest communication do you know what i'm saying um i want to pull some cards and see if i can't figure out how this person is actually feeling about you right now because a lot of this stuff isn't really it's not really talking to me about that so much. I mean, this person does still have some, you know, feeling for you. Okay, the two of coins. This is fluctuation. This is some sort of imbalance. This is a very, like, in and out, back and forth kind of energy. So um, it seems like this person's feelings towards you kind of fluctuate. Um, it's like they can't quite make their mind up about how they feel. We have the Knight of Wands showing up here again. Um... I think I mentioned this already, but there is still interest. This person is still interested in you romantically. This person is still attracted to you, like, physically. Um, wands have kind of sexual undertones. And I mentioned with the Two of Wands and the Three of Wands that I feel they, they already have an intention to contact you at some point. Like, they've already decided that that's something they want to do. They're just not sure yet when they want to take that action towards you. Um... Seven of Swords. The Seven of Swords relates to deception. It can indicate some kind of sneaky behavior. A lot of times I see this as someone trying to avoid confrontation. This is kind of funny because they're not really... I feel like in the past this person maybe has been kind of sneaky. Like they have taken steps to avoid confrontations with you. And they're still kind of in that energy, but they're moving out of it. But as far as their actual true feelings towards you are concerned, they're not, it's like they're not giving it up. <laughs> um, we have the Nine of Swords. This is anxiety and stress really overthinking things, being stuck in your head. It's interesting that the Nine of Swords has come out for every reading today. Um, everybody's stressed. I don't know. I think it's uh, astrological. But um, anyway, this person thinks about your connection a lot, actually. They think about it a lot, and I think sometimes they do lose sleep over it. Seven of coins. This is future planning, long-term investments. This card also relates to patience, waiting. Um, okay. Let me get one more for right now. King of Wands. This person actually thinks pretty highly of you, I feel. And it seems like... <sighs> there's some guilt, there's some remorse for things that maybe they did in, in your relationship. And this is regardless of whether you were ever actually in a relationship with this person or not. It's interesting because I feel like this doesn't feel like something that's new, obviously. It feels like you have history with this person, and the history is not great. 
um, or some of it is not great. But I, I feel like, I feel like this is, um, yeah, th this person has guilt and regret for like choices that they made, things they did. And they feel like you deserved better than what they gave you. They feel like they caused you a lot of grief that you didn't deserve. And this person does care about you, but it's like they don't really know how to express it. I feel like this person may be a little bit like emotionally constipated, so to speak. Like they just, they don't really know how to express their feelings in a productive kind of way, if that makes sense. Particularly the more, more, more complicated feelings. Like anger, jealousy, stuff like that. This person, I feel, is really good at expressing. But other things like sadness, fear, love, stuff like that is a bit more difficult for them. So this person really has a soft spot for you, but they just don't, like, they just don't know how to express that. And they're, I think they're maybe kind of in the process of figuring out how they can do that, how they can express how they really feel and, you know, they're, I feel like they, they would like to make an apology to you also, actually. Um, honestly, I get the sense that a lot of you who are watching this aren't exactly thinking about telling this person how you feel, like that you love them and stuff. I feel like a lot of you are thinking about telling them how you feel about like the way they treated you or things that they did in your relationship or, you know, in your connection, regardless of whether you've actually been in a relationship with the, this person or not. <laughs> and so if that's what you're thinking about doing, if that's the kind of, if those are the kinds of feelings that you're thinking about expressing, I would say yes. I think you should talk about it. And I feel like this person is in the same, like they have the, they have the same idea. They have the same desire. Um, I don't know that I would contact this person like tomorrow. I might give it a little bit of time, but, um, these cards are definitely emphasizing that there needs to be a conversation here. Okay. And your person is kind of in the same boat. Like they are wanting to talk to you. Um, they're just not quite sure how they're going to go about it yet. But um, yeah, group three, I think I'm going to leave it there. So I hope that this resonated with you and I hope it was interesting. This is just general. So, you know, take what applies to you. Leave the rest behind. If something doesn't fit, don't try to make it fit. If none of it resonated, then it wasn't for you. So don't worry about it. Um, I do offer personal readings. The links are in the description below if you're interested in checking those out. And um, yeah, I think that's going to do it for today. So thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. And I hope I see you next time, guys. Bye.